Go ahead. How long you been out here? 13 years. What would you want people to know about it? Being homeless, it, it, oh, it depends on how you, uh, you look at it. You know, gotta have somewhere to live. And this is where I feel. I, feel, I got two ways to where I think about this situation. One thing, you know, at least I'm living. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, I'm not in the grave somewhere, dead or whatever. Yeah. But I feel like I feel like the government should have more stuff for the homeless. What I mean by that is every time you go to try to get some kind of resources for the homeless, and you show them your homeless letter, and I'm homeless, oh, uh, we stopped that a long time ago. So, so the point of the matter it is right here is that if, if you're talking about you want to end homeless, you want all the homeless folks out the street, you got to put poor effort to help these people. And the ones that I have that are mental health, you know what you got to do with that? So, I, you know, like I say, in all reality, I feel like this. I feel like if you're homeless, get out here and do the best you can every day. Look for work. Uh, for me, at first, when I when I became homeless, I was working in couch in the bar. I worked there for six years. But I wasn't making enough money to have a place. I made enough money to survive and I have a place. So what I did was one day I was I was digging I had bought me a, a scooter. Not the one I have there, another one. And I was riding uh and a guy hit me. And they left me in the middle of the street, knocked my teeth out, took my kneecaps off, I don't want to mess my back up. I had a concussion, I didn't know who I was. This car. Yeah. Your teeth and just, out. It just left me for dead. Left man. you for dead. Yeah, blood everywhere. I'm talking teeth coming out everywhere. The lady was backing up because I was spitting on so much blood. You know what I mean? And it was coming out and everything. And so, um, and then that right there made it so I couldn't work. Because when I went in the hospital, my kneecap messed up. They messed my back up. That's why now you see, I, most of the time I have crutches or eat or this this one of the chairs that one of my friends, she's a school teacher who lives on the street. And I God thank me for. Uh, she uh she went and bought me a chair. But she got tired of seeing me walking way down there on crutches all the way down here. She was like, come on, man. They got resources to help you out. Why did why I said, well, I don't apply for a lot of stuff. I said, I said, and ain't nothing came through yet, so I gotta do what I gotta do. I just can't lay around and do nothing. I just cause all the all the time I'm used to working. You know what I mean? But I can't do that anymore, you know? So she she went and bought me this chair right here. She donated this to me. And uh, she talked to a few more people, and uh, I could have got a power chair, but uh, I was like, "Well, I ain't gonna be greedy. I just take this one, you know, and thank God for it. You know what I mean?" But like I said, after being homeless, man, it got its, it got its like any other any other situation. It got its ins and outs. But a lot of people who who's homeless, and I hate to say this, they really don't want to go back inside. Really? But, yeah, because you know why. Because being out, out there is less problem. Yeah. What I mean by that, less problem, you got to deal with all kind of bullshit. Like paying like, for a mortgage and cleaning you know, up your house? That, that, that's, that's a part of life. You're going to pay bills regardless. Yeah. I'm talking about homeless or not, you're going to buy food, better buy clothes, you got to do all that stuff. So they, the bills bills going to always be there. Yeah. It, it, it's just the fact dealing with it. Like, if we're homeless people, we don't deal with the regular people. See, we only deal with us. Right. You know what I mean? Come on, nobody want to deal with us anyway. They don't like us. Yeah. They think we're bombs, we're, we're, we're uh, low life. A lot of people, that's what they think. Yeah. You don't know, some of these people got education, master's degree. Really? Yeah, a lot of them. And they just, they just messed up, head messed up. You know right. yeah. some, some, some of them screws are a little loose. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I met a guy out here that was a doctor. Man. Really? Uh, he, he's homeless still to this day. He's somewhere wandering around. That man is so smart. He was like, man, you know, I had it one time, man. I had a business there. He said, I just got tired of society, man. Every time I turned around, man, my family was just begging me for stuff. They never once told me they loved me. Yeah. He said, so I told them you can have everything. And I left. From New York. Mm -hmm. He said, man, I've been on the street now for years now. He said, you know one thing about it? He said, man, I really love my family and my children. He said, but I don't think they love them. They love the money. And he did, he said, but the people that I met being homeless, he said, they love me for who I am and respect me for who I am. And see, that's that's the part I'm talking about. Homeless people, we have a lot of respect for each other. Yeah. And so we all we got. And our, even our families don't even want to deal with us some of them. Yeah. So, you know, and, and it's not their fault. It's some of it's the homeless fault, some of the family fault, some of the street fault, 
some of the workplace. I'm talking about, we can put the blame on a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. But one thing, you got to reach inside yourself and say, hey, man, I'm not going to quit. Because if you do, you'll be found somewhere around here like a lot of these people did in a corner or, or whatever. And, 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 you know, like all these places they moved, they had Tent City. I remember when they had it over here. The, the Olympic came and took it. Yeah. Why would you do that? Yeah. You gave these folks this money. You gave this to these people. The city did. So that they could be off the street. And it worked. Yeah. But you came and took it back. Now yeah. they're back out here. Yeah. So why are you complaining? Right. You cause it on yourself. They, the people got it. Regardless of what, we may not be part of this society right now because we're not a work, as you call it, we're not a working class of people. But one thing about it is right here, we are people. Yeah. And we're here whether you like it or not. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, you know, all the things we, we ask for is just a little respect, man. That's why a lot of a lot of homeless people get routed. If you was, uh, I sit here every day. And you want to hear some of the stuff these people say out of their mouths, man, yeah. you wouldn't believe. Well, these are supposed to be the stand-up people. Yeah. Supposed to be the people that, the working class people that supposed to get, show the respect to the kids and all this stuff in society. They say the most cruelest stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? One guy had told me, well, well, why don't you, why don't you just go and get a job? I, first of all, I never asked you for anything. Have yeah. I? Yeah. And he, he did like that. He said, no, we were arguing back and forth right here. I said, I never asked you for anything. Did I did He said, no. Yeah. I said, why are you in my business? I, first of all, let me check you. I said, I said, let me tell you something crazy ass, man. I said, I would be working. If a person like you to run me over and left me in the street. Sure, yeah. I said, you, I said, I said, he's a criminal. But you gonna look at me as being a criminal because I'm out here trying to get something to eat. Right. You know what I mean? I said, man, get out of here. I said, come on, man, use your head. Yeah. I, if, if that was your son or your wife or some kid was out here in a situation like this, how would you feel? Yeah. And people was mistreating them. Yeah. I said, you gotta think about that. I said, when you mistreat somebody, I said, God will turn around when your people will get mistreated yeah. and you won't like it. You know, so after that, he rolled off. And then, you know, he did. The guy came back. He did. Came back. Paul's right up. I said, I hope I don't have to have to fight this guy. Because, you know, I can't stand up yeah, yeah. Really, for a long period of time. Excuse me. And so uh, I told him like this. I said, hey, man. I said, he said, no, nah, I came back, man, because, you know, I thought about what you said. I got a family. You know, I got a wife, man. I got a job, good job. You know, I got a nice car. You know what I mean? He said, and a person like you don't have nothing, but you can still be happy and be out here. And you told me the truth. I was wrong. Yeah. He said, man, do you need anything? And went to the bank and gave us money. Yeah. So, like I say, sometimes you have to let people know and tell them, you know, because a lot of times we forget. No, if I, I'm just going to speak clear. Sure, yeah. I, I really don't want to go back inside. You don't? Yeah. It's, it's too much of a problem, man. Yeah. I go see my family anytime I want to. I just walk down the street where I want to. I'm not attached to nothing. Yeah. And what I mean by that is, I can say, at night, I can lay down in the grass and look up at the stars. Yeah. Uh, yeah you know, and, 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 and my mind is free. You know, even my kids, my, you know what my sister told me? My sister has a place for me to live right now. And me and her got into an argument about a month ago. But she invited me over to her house for a cookout. I came late. And so she was like, you always coming late. I, I said, you know why? I said, because I want to come late. I said, I said, I got other things to do. I ain't got time to stay over here around y'all all the time. I grew up with you. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know what's up with you now. Yeah. And so she did like this. She said, uh, she said, and, 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 are you still staying in the woods with those people? I said, with well, what people? I said, those people. I said, let me tell you something about that. Those people are more family to me than you are. Yeah. Those people take care of me more than, than you ever have. Yeah. I said, not saying you don't love me, so I know you do. But you got your own family you got to take care of. Yeah. I said, well, you know what, that When I'm sick, they make sure I go to the hospital. When I'm hungry, they help feed me. You know what I'm saying? They, if they got one can of vinyl sausage, we'll split these, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? I said, and, and I said, they do a lot of stuff that you probably wouldn't do. Yeah. I said, so don't talk about those people. Yeah. I said, those people are the ones that take care of your brother. Yeah. And you should be happy that I'm around them. Yeah. You know what I mean? And she was like, well, I didn't really mean it. I said, yes, you did. You mean just like you said. Uh, yeah. I said, so, you're sober? I said, you, you speak your mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we, after, after we finished, and me and her, we thought about it, we were happy about it. And she was like, you're not going to lead those people. I said, man. Yeah. So I told him I wasn't. I said, because I helped. I, I keep a lot of bad guys off. 
Because, you know, we have bullies sure, yeah. and they come. How y'all doing? Hey, good morning. Hey, big man. <laughs> and uh, I know him. He's come to the, when I work in the couch, too, he's come eat him. Yeah. And uh, they, how should I put it? They come and bully us. Yeah. Like, seriously, you got a place here, there's a place here, and there's a place there. You'll have people like in this place still don't like us. It's yeah. just like with the Indians and Cowboys and, yeah. and, 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 and they will come over and actually try to take over our stuff. Yeah. Yeah, they just come up in your camp and like, hey man, what's up, man? What y'all got up in here? Yeah. They're like, oh yeah, we got something up in here for you. It, it ain't what you think it is. <laughs> yeah. That's out. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I and a lot that's why a lot of people come and try to live with me. Because I told them, first of all, if you will live with me, you're gonna get out every day. Try to do something, get your disability started, find a job, go out here. People let you do extra work. You just ain't gonna lay up in here all day. Yeah. I said because you know what they want. Well, let me know that you're not trying to help yourself. But I was telling, I was telling, I said then we got this. I said you know we got the COVID virus going and all this stuff, man. You yeah. know I had it twice. Twice. Yeah. yeah. I was in hospital for four months. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I was gonna die. That was the doctor. He was like, it messed up my lungs. Yeah. And uh, they, and they messed with my heart, so they put a pacemaker. Yeah. So I, I told him, I said, I said, man, it has its disadvantages, but me myself, I like, I like it. You know, yeah. I know a lot of people want to go. Now I would go in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna have my own place. Right. I can't live with nobody. Yeah. You know what I mean? I like, I like, you know, being able to sit back in a quiet, peace and quiet, man. Yeah. I like to look at stuff like Discovery and stuff like that and look at, you know, history and all that. Yeah. I like, I really don't like, I really don't, now, female, uh, one of my friends, they cool. But, but I, I just don't like a whole lot of ruckus. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Loud shit, all that, all that. Yeah. I just ain't with that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and thank God for this guy coming behind me. Yeah. He's a, uh, that guy right there looks, let me tell you something. I ain't never seen a person like that in my life. That man right there, I don't know if he is an angel or scared. But what you know, like I say, man, what I think they should start doing, and I'm gonna tell you what to work and bring the homeless for us. Don't go out there and try to tell them they gotta come off the street. They gotta say, man, now we come to help y'all out. What do you need? And, and, and they got an organization, and I love them to them. They come around and bring us tents, uh, uh, um, food, covers. Clothes, socks. What are they you know called? I, mean? I don't know the name of them, but I know it's two. It's two cars, and when they come up, man, they be loaded down. Yeah. And they be asking me what more homeless people have so they can give them stuff. Yeah. And like I say, I talk to them, man, and um, they good people. So we trying to do what we can. Yeah. But they saying they say that the government is helping them to help us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They say, yeah, man. They say, oh, they got a lady that cooks and everything. You know. Like I say, it, it, it's rough out here, but you can make it. You just got to get out here and do what you got to. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, I appreciate your time, James. You know, you've got a lot of wisdom, man. Mm -hmm. With your permission, I'm going to probably put this on a YouTube channel okay. so hopefully somebody can see and understand things better. But you know one thing? We might be the people, when they do have some crap going on here, they show people how to live outside. Yeah, yes, that's right. Hey, cause a lot, you know, even though I know someone know how to camp, and stuff like that, but we know how to do a lot of yeah. stuff. It was street smart, but I'm not guaranteeing that I could make it out here for sure. It's hard, man. You know what? I don't see some people come out here really and just become homeless and be destroyed. Because yeah. they so used to being on the inside. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. There's a whole different atmosphere. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then you got to fight the weather. That's the biggest part. Right. The weather. Yeah. Boy, the weather can destroy you out here, man. So that's why now. You know, we got, I got my place built, my, my, my place is built tight. I don't even worry about the water. You know, nothing like that. That's no, none of that. Yeah. I can go to my place and look, get, get, I got a big king size bed. Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah, because the, the people down here, they throw away a lot of beds at this, um, it's, it's, a, it's a complex down here. But they got a lot of people who be moving in yeah. and stuff, and they can't pay the rent, the rent like $1,600, $1,700. A lot of those people have a lot of good furniture and stuff, so they end up leaving it and they're outside, so they let us have it. Yeah. And we go, we get it, get the beds and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a tent that you stay yeah, in? Yeah, I stay in a big old tent. Big old tent. Yeah, my tent can hold about, about 10 feet. Yeah. Five more beside it. That's mine. I put them up like, I made it like a little community. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's, if you see it, you'll trip out. Yeah. Then I got a gate around it. They got a gate around it? Yeah, we built the gate about two days ago. Wow. Yeah, I, I got this guy that I was giving money to. He comes down there and do work on my stuff. Yeah. He, he built the rock, because I can't do it. Yeah, yeah. I can't, I can't hardly get out there and pick up trash. Yeah. So he cleans it up and do all kind of stuff with it. Yeah. Yeah. He come checks on me once a day to make sure I'm all right. Over I come in, all right, you all right? He said, all right then, man. I'm going to head on back in. He leaves. So, Thanks, you know. buddy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop recording now. Okay.